management companies delete the regional waste management markets deploying spanning the entire waste management value chain now it's leading the transition to a circular economy by upcycling recycling and repurposing end of life resources through environmental friendly solutions and they are on a mission to achieve zero waste to landfill uh, welcome uh, prashant sir and uh, i would request you to kindly introduce yourself please share your background and your roots and some interesting facets about your life uh, sure sure neil but uh, thank thank you sandeep sir uh, pleasure to be here and uh, that's what we were discussing earlier i think this is uh, 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 more most important thing for today's uh, uh, environment is to get like minded and passionate people for environment in a room <laughs> right so otherwise it's it's, it's more uh, uh, talks than action and uh, 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 we have been uh, fortunate enough to at least uh, make some uh, tangible progress as blue planet i mean uh, i uh, myself was uh, i mean uh, i was born in a small uh, village in uh, uh, near gorakhpur uh, 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 almost uh, five decades back <laughs> okay and uh, from uh, there i from a humble uh, background we i did my uh, 12th uh, uh, from lucknow uh, from uh, uh, city montessori cms that's what uh, my alma mater from school is Uh, after that uh, i spent uh, 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 my bachelor's and masters from indore in devi ahilya uh, university and uh, post that i went for my mba in us uh, i did my uh, mba uh, from drexel university in uh, philadelphia and uh, spent almost uh, two decades in us uh, between 2001 and uh, 2018 uh, is where uh, we had Uh, different ventures uh, that we started uh, uh, we i worked for uh, different it companies uh, mindry was my last gig uh, as a professional and then we uh, i was a part of uh, a venture uh, that uh, uh, we uh, formed with in 2009 uh, and we grew that venture to a uh, uh, 2000 plus com- uh, people company and presence in eight countries Uh, and we sold it to hitachi uh, hitachi consulting in 2014 uh, post that uh, our another venture which was into corporate services uh, we uh, had a, a, a very significant growth that we uh, uh, developed that platform uh, by for addressing the sme sector in uh, uh, asia and Sa- southeast asia uh, based out of singapore and uh, uh, Blue Planet is our third and the latest adventure, uh, which is, I would say, uh, one of the most uh, aspirational goal that we set for ourselves. Okay, and the uh, uh, it was not an easy decision for me personally and professionally to get out of my comfort zone, uh, living in California near Lake Tahoe and uh, coming lock, stock, barrel to uh, New Delhi from an AQI AQI of thirty to six hundred <laughs> in a span of uh, uh, just few weeks, uh, but it's it's been a very enriching journey, I would say. Uh, uh, it, uh, it what we when we started Blue Planet, it uh, uh, came with a purpose. Okay, I think we have done uh, uh, with God's grace, we have done uh, uh, fairly well for ourselves, uh, fair for our stakeholders, shareholders. Uh, and very uh, contented uh, life professionally uh, but we wanted to do something more uh, going above and beyond uh, our professional uh, careers is where we wanted to make an impact right be it uh, uh, positive impact for our environment for our society at large uh, to uh, tackle a problem which seems really humongous from outside okay so when we were looking at the right venture uh, we had few of the uh, 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 other uh, uh, initiatives also in mind uh, but of course this waste management and climate tech uh, uh, really stood uh, out uh, became an outlier as far as impact is concerned so that drove us uh, to finalize on uh, uh, looking for a solution which is where the uh, the problem problem is is really really significant uh, today Uh, where um, the lack of right solution um, makes it even more critical for us to address it uh, and uh, the scalability aspect of that solution would be uh, phenomenal 
So those were the two, three reasons why we uh, we thought uh, uh, something in this environment and climate tech would uh, uh, may, may, may make sense uh, for us. Uh, and that's how Blue Planet was born in, in, in 2017, uh, 2018 timeframe. Uh, in the, in the last, and what we have done is we have built in the, one of the fastest growing uh, integrated platform uh, for waste management. And uh, uh, what does that mean is uh, integrated platform is where we uh, uh, focus on getting access uh, uh, to different kinds of waste. Like if you look at uh, the waste, uh, let's take MSW for example, municipal solid waste. So today uh, we are looking at uh, uh, anyone, whenever waste gets generated from your or my household, uh, someone collects it, someone else transports it, someone else takes it to a secondary station, and then uh, uh, someone takes it to the landfill, and then finally it lands up somewhere where no one's owned the solution out there. So that is what we want to disrupt, where uh, the end-to-end -end solution for a waste management has to be owned by a single uh, person or a, a organization which will own the prob uh, the solution to the problem uh, so that we can uh, we can build a sustainable ecosystem around it so that was uh, one uh, pillar the second pillar we focused on is once you get that ecosystem built up deploying technologies uh, to make sure that we uh, uh, are able to uh, believe in our dream of zero to landfill okay so whatever this, the, the moment you have that tech driven execution, uh, you, you become, uh, uh, you, the waste becomes a resource for us where you will always look for a, a way or a mechanism. Uh, how can you upcycle uh, that waste, right? So we have a different technology for uh, organic waste to biogas. We have technology for landfills, which where we reap uh, value from uh, the landfill waste into much better products or solutions. Industrial waste has to be much uh, better utilized to replace virgin uh, material uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the third bucket, which is very, very important, is where all these operations have to be ESG mandated. Okay, so uh, we should not be solving one problem and creating uh, uh, three others, either for the environment or for uh, our ecosystem there. So which is, uh, and this is I'm talking about, let's say, six, seven years back when ESG used to be just a three letter word. Uh, that is where um, uh, ESG was uh, in our DNA since uh, day one. And that has uh, given us a tremendous amount of discipline, uh, credibility and respect as far as uh, the, uh, being looked upon uh, in the industry uh, is concerned. Uh, to wrap up with, I mean, so far in the last uh, six years, we have, uh, uh, done 13 acquisitions to build that capability and capacity. Uh, we have uh, uh, 28 uh, entities and companies running operations in six different countries. Uh, we are number two waste management player in Singapore. Uh, we collect transport waste and process waste from more than 40% of Singapore's population. Uh, we are building Singapore's first privately owned waste to energy plant for a 10 megawatt. Uh, we work very closely with NEA and uh, other government agencies in terms of their uh, uh, future roadmap for circularity and uh, net zero uh, game plan, what they are building uh, on. Uh, in Malaysia, we are the uh, uh, pioneers in industrial waste through our facility in Penang. Uh, where uh, we process uh, uh, the waste, industrial waste from nearby uh, town of Penang, which is a manufacturing hub uh, from clients like uh, uh, Samsung, Robert Bosch, uh, and multiple other manufacturing entities there. Uh, in India, we are uh, uh, the largest player for uh, uh, landfill mining solutions. Uh, not only in India, actually, now we are uh, the largest in the Asia as far as uh, the, uh, the landfill mining solutions are concerned. Uh, we have processed more than 13 million tons of waste over the last five years uh, and avoided more than uh, 7 million tons of CO2 emissions uh, going into the environment. Uh, the, uh, and today we have a processing capacity of 25,000 tons of waste a day is what uh, uh, we are processing where we are avoiding either uh, landfill clearance or uh, fresh waste processing and so on and so forth. Uh, 
and uh, in the next seven years, our goal is to achieve uh, 40 million tons of CO2 emissions uh, going into the environment, which is almost uh, uh, four uh, percent of uh, Honorable PM Modi's uh, goal of a billion uh, tons of CO2 emissions going into the environment. So that is a short and uh, sweet story about Blue Planet, but I would love to keep this. I have, I don't have a PPT, but I have some pictures which I can uh, share a little bit later as far as the impact. So uh, one last point I want to make. So, so far we have been uh, uh, focusing uh, waste management as the key focus area for us. Uh, but over the last year, year and a half, we have been uh, doing a lot of retrospection, right? I think waste management um, uh, is the kind of focus we have. We were losing the core purpose of the organization in terms of impact. Right, so uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give some examples here. So we cleared a landfill site in, in Chennai, uh, in, in, uh, which was the largest landfill mining project in uh, India, where we cleared 1.6 million tons of waste uh, and cleared 96 acres of land uh, from a erstwhile bird century. So a bird century got converted into a landfill and we cleared that landfill back and gave that land back, which they are making it uh, a wetland, which hopefully it will become a bird century or pericarnale lake again. Okay, so I have a couple of, maybe a dozen examples like these, uh, which I will maybe share a little bit later, but that's why we are reinventing ourselves to give a new rigor, give a new purpose and life for Blue Planet 2.0. Uh, if you, would see our our, our uh, logo. We just rebranded ourselves uh, last month, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, we have a new uh, kind of uh, vision uh, to make sure that we uh, uh, bring some impact-driven uh, rigor for our future generations, for attracting the right talent, for getting for giving purpose to more than almost uh, 2,500, 3,000 employees uh, that we have. So that they can be more feel more connected uh, with the purpose and the impact that they are creating, rather than just uh, uh, making uh, sure that that is something which uh, uh, is not so glamorous, right? I mean, waste management, to be frank, uh, Nilima, you are in the sector. It's not a very gla glamorous uh, uh, job. So we need to create some grammar here, which will help us attract the right talent uh, to continue to train, retrain them. Uh, and to make sure their excitement and zeal continues uh, to make an impact. Great, sir. I mean, uh, knowing all these various uh, impact uh, that Blue Planet has been creating is really inspiring. And uh, it's actually amazing, you know, that the potential uh, that an organization can have on the environment as well as on the economy. I mean, it's 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 fantastic to know. And as you said, you know, the, this unglamorous field of uh, waste management from among all the choices that you had, uh, I mean, it's a leap of faith definitely for you. And you must have had a lot of apprehensions and challenges when you uh, when you went to choose this sector itself. So I mean, uh, kudos and hats off to you for uh, this uh, uh, for this step. And uh, I'm just inquisitive to know, was the name Blue Planet actually inspired from the David Attenborough series? <laughs> actually not. So they, they, we, when we uh, uh, were sitting and debating on the name, uh, we, uh, it, it was an afterthought that, we, that came once uh, we uh, identified, when we finalized the name that David, David Attenborough's uh, series, uh, it was an afterthought, it was not the motivator. Uh, for us, okay. uh, our motivator was uh, more circularity around it. Yes, but yeah, very Great. very valid point. <laughs> and sir and I, we've got uh, we've twin to the occasion of wearing blue and white. So yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I wanted to ask you also, uh, Prashant sir. Like, so for the benefit of students, can you briefly share as to how waste management is so important to meet the SDG twenty thirty targets? I mean, why is waste management so important a sector? in combating climate change and also in reaching the SDG goals? No, no, absolutely. See, I think uh, 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 the uh, uh, magnitude and the focus of this problem uh, 
is is was still underserved i would say over the last 5 7 years back right the focus itself is started to come around 2015 2016 when the sbm 2.0 uh, guidelines came in uh, in india and uh, uh, because uh, the uh, the significant growth that we are aspiring or we have achieved over the last decade and we plan to achieve from let's say 2 trillion to 3 trillion to 5 trillion we are talking about um, uh, 30 plus trillion going in the in the next 25 years that growth will come uh, at the cost of our environment our our neighborhoods our natural uh, habitat as well so if we assume that uh, we uh, are all of us are so uh, uh, living that challenge in day in day out today where we are still at um uh, 60 million tons of waste getting generated in india uh, uh we are looking at making it more than double over the next 7 uh, years itself right as our uh, urban population uh, doubles from 400 million to 800 million in the next two uh, two decades a, a significant portion of that if we don't solve when the problem is still manageable it will become exponentially more difficult to solve it when we have a white elephant sitting in our room uh, in the next uh, decade or so okay so we need to uh, and how we can do that is to focus more on uh, public awareness which we are a firm firm believer that uh, people and consumers should participate in whatever shape or form so the more awareness we create the more engaged uh, uh, citizens are they will be asking the right questions they will be asking uh, uh, and they, they will be demanding the right solutions uh, from uh, their neighborhoods uh, to come up with number one uh, number two we need to focus more on uh, processing uh, uh, and minimize dependence on landfill okay it might be counterproductive if people ask that you guys are the largest player in landfill and you want the lesser landfill to be created absolutely we will promote that right because it is the right thing to do so we want to do good while doing well right to make sure we are not uh, uh, solving uh, uh, i mean creating other problems just to create we have a sustainable business around it right processing is important awareness is important and uh, making sure the government policies that we have been formulated they uh, get implemented on the ground right right so i think that is where we see uh, uh, uh some gap i think we have made some good progress there but we still have a long runway as far as uh, uh, making those policies implemented on the ground be it epr policies be it uh, sbm 2.0 guidelines uh, standardizing and uh, framework driven uh, executions i think those things will uh, surely help us uh, uh, get that tailwind uh, which uh, will be very very essential for us to meet the sdg guidelines for 2030 yeah i think i completely agree with the current scenario of uh, population and growing needs uh, i think the waste management is definitely something that's going to be exponentially rising and it's the right time to um, catch hold of the situation and maybe work on it uh, i've always told people that you know maybe uh, as an organization i would like to shut shop in the next 20 years because i don't want to see any kind of waste and people say that that that's being uh, that's being too uh, uh i mean that's being too uh, optimistic <laughs> you took it <in. laughs> yeah 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 uh, uh, i read on your website you know that blue planet has developed india's truly integrated decentralized waste management plant in greater noida and if you could talk a bit more about this and what are the technologies that you have adopted i mean it will really be helpful and for maybe uh, our alum who are based in uh, greater noida uh, have they seen this plant uh, also as well it's there in uh, it's the only one of its kind in india so i think it's a great thing uh, if you could talk about it also uh, sure sure so maybe what i will uh, try to do is maybe sh- show some pictures also yeah. uh, if i can i'll, I'll make you the, i'll uh, i'll i'll have to give you access yeah so why do you do that so that, that is correct so i think as i was mentioning earlier we need to uh, ensure that we are uh, uh, we we are in a position where we can uh, 
think this platform Amrita? is new for me. Yeah. Deco. Amrita, can you make sir the host also as well or the co-host? Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Prashant, you can uh, maybe move the slide or something. Yeah, can you can you see the slide? Ha, but the kuch nahi hai. Uh, Aasman ka photo hai. Got it. Oh, is it? Okay. Let me. Can you see it now? No. Stop and reshare. Yeah, you've stopped sharing content now. Okay, one second. Can you see it now? लोड हो रहा है। No, I can't see anything on your screen actually. No, but it's it says uh, loading or something. Yeah. Okay, Oops. Blue Planet again. Stop sharing content. Uh... Let me try one more time, otherwise we'll just go with the audio part. Resume. You still can't see it? Push to push to be ara, but push dikneda. Is this blank screen or something? Oh Amrita, can you help? Okay, I there? think there's some technical glitch here. I can't. But that's fine. So I, I think let's continue. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll continue to. I, uh, yeah. Haan, I, I, I photo can send, uh, we'll circulate. Haan, I'll send the PPT hmm. separately. That's fine. So yeah, that, that is correct. So this is uh, something which uh, we experimented around two and a half. Uh, years back where uh, this is uh, the first of its kind in India uh, where uh, we have put a decentralized integrated solution for uh, 11,000 households in Greater Noida, okay, where uh, we go uh, and collect waste using uh, 11 uh, uh, CNG vehicles are used for door-to-door -door collection from those 11,000 households. Uh, they do sort segregation to some extent. They all the vehicles they get uh, segregated between uh, have compartments for dry and wet waste, uh, e waste, uh, and so on and so forth. They bring the waste to a centralized waste park uh, in uh, Greater Noida, where we have deployed uh, our own technologies. Okay, uh, uh, to process, and our goal is to process eighty to ninety percent of the waste that we collect. Okay, so how we build a true circular economy ecosystem is we clear the landfills uh, in the uh, best case scenario. We clear the landfills on a zero residue model, and we give uh, 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 and give uh, that land back for a better use. And when we put that uh, uh, technologies where we commit eighty to ninety percent of fresh waste getting processed uh, and upcycled, so organic waste we use uh, to generate uh, biogas. Uh, which are being fed uh, into the same vehicles we go to collect uh, the waste next day, right? So that is a true uh, circular economy ecosystem uh, that we have built, uh, where uh, uh, we will avoid more than 100,000 uh, tons of waste going to the landfill uh, uh, over the next 7 to 10 years, uh, which might be located 30, 40, 50 kilometers away, 
and uh, you avoid uh, GHG emissions. You do uh, a much uh, better sustainable ecosystem, more engaged community, and uh, you reap the right resource value from the waste, which otherwise would be emitting methane for the next uh, years to come. And that's that's wonderful to know. I mean, uh, uh, a complete circular uh, uh, system, especially in the waste management sector, is. Uh, I mean, I haven't actually heard it and this like actually completes the entire loop wherein the vehicles are also uh, getting the same um, CNG uh, uh, gas from the organic waste that is generated. Uh, my, uh, I mean, one concern that I had was about waste to energy technologies. So, uh, Delhi especially has not been uh, doing great in the waste to energy um, Plants, you know, there are around, I think, 13 to 15 of such uh, waste to energy plants. What is your take on it? I mean, do you believe in this technology and is there, a, uh, do you think it can work in a country like India, which generates 60 to 80 percent of organic waste? Uh, what's your take on it? No, no, very interesting point. And I think uh, that is uh, the reason uh, why we have been. Uh, uh, very, very vocal uh, for us. Those are not waste to energy plants, but those are energy to waste plants. Okay, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the reason why. Because the the uh, uh, the, uh, the in, during the uh, waste uh, processing, I think the uh, uh, all these uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 plants, whatever number you say, uh, they treat the waste as it is in India, with where they have been designed a particular manner, uh, where they can only take the uh, 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 moisture content at a particular level, right? Yeah. In India, you are technically putting more energy to burn or uh, make that waste dry, then you can reap the uh, energy from it in terms of uh, making it sustainable for the longer term, right? And that has been the biggest driver I've uh, I mean, trust me, I have, uh, uh, there is not even a single plant among those uh, waste to energy plants that I would not have seen personally. Uh, uh, and I have personally uh, engaged, evaluated 55 different companies uh, in terms of uh, uh, some kind of partnerships, m &A or uh, uh, outright sale or whatever. But the challenge out there is the same. They don't focus on the uh, waste characterization first they put the waste to uh, energy plants, assuming from a lift and shift model from developed country and assume it would work in India. Unfortunately, that is not the case, right? I'll give you an example, a uh, live example. Uh, I don't want to name companies here, but there is a plant uh, in Maharashtra where the uh, uh, promoters himself, they invested more than 100 crores of their own money uh, for a 250 crore plant. Uh, where uh, uh, for the same waste to energy plants, it was uh, highly celebrated and stuff, but a small uh, glitch that the plant cannot operate beyond a moisture content of 35%. And in India and in Maharashtra, eight months out of 12, you will uh, uh, have a significant major um, uh, due to uh, rainy season, due to winter season, due to fog, mist and stuff moisture content will vary between 30 to 80 percent throughout the year right so it's it's a live yeah. example of uh, operation successful patient debt right so we have waste to energy plants they are installed uh, but unless and until they uh, are financially and operationally uh, self-sufficient uh, they will not I... solve the problem and that is what the biggest uh, problem for our uh, uh, ecosystem is I mean, um, uh, I really, really actually you uh, you think in the same things that uh, plants need to be and any technology needs to be put forth in any kind of situation. Um, another question that I'm really inquisitive to know about is that Blue Planet has technologies for waste plants for fuel. They uh, polyfuel, which is the uh, the alternative to various kinds of fuel. Uh, my question is, do you think there is still a need for single-use plastic bags, yeah. given that these technologies exist? 
I'm losing you. Ah, uh, can you hear me? Hello. I think it's a little little wavy. Ah. Uh, hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you just try again? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I just. Uh, um, actually, I wanted to ask, given that advanced technologies for converting plastic to fuel, do you think there is still a need for single-use plastic bags? No, no. See, I think uh, uh, I uh, have a little different opinion there, uh, especially for a developing country like India. And other South uh, East Asian countries, uh, uh, the challenge with our the developing economies is, is unless and until we have a sustainable replacement solution for uh, challenges like uh, single use plastic, it will be very, very difficult to implement those. Right. So, if, if uh, what government and uh, the policymakers uh, need to, and they are already working on is one way is to make sure they slowly cut down the single use plastic while we promote and incentivize the uh, uh, sustainable uh, solutions for single use uh, replacement of single use plastics both the two have to go in parallel to make the right impact where uh, eventually in the next couple of years we will be able to see some challenge okay uh, some solution which can be uh, brought in just banning plastic will 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 be very very difficult to uh, uh, implement number one uh, and also to uh, see how we can uh, uh, make a sustainable uh, solution which 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 can uh, help us solve the problem at the core. You know that there has to be a mix and batch of both and. On certain products, when there are no alternatives ready in the market as of now. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Another, uh, another question that I was inquisitive to know about uh, was uh, I mean, what do you think about the circular economy system in India? I mean, are there places that we can do better in terms of policies, investments? There has been a lot of focus, you know, uh, Swachh Bharat Mission, Mission Life, and all these various uh, schemes and all. But from my experience, actually, India's waste management system is largely supported by the informal Wadiwala network. Is there is there any kind of sync? that blue uh, planet does with this economy as also as well and uh, and yeah and other other stuff that you would like to mention yeah no see i think uh, for us uh, the whole esg mandated execution that was uh, in, as a part of our uh, uh, initial pillars for support we are a firm believer of uh, 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 making sure that we treat these uh, uh, unorganized sector players as a part of the solution, not a competition for us, right? So wherever possible, uh, be it an e-waste solution, be it for MSW solutions, we want to make sure uh, the whole uh, social inclusivity part of it, uh, financial inclusivity, giving them better uh, tools, better training, better uh, uh, work uh, uh, ethics and stuff. This is something uh, that is some uh, we always believe in and wherever possible, of course, wherever possible, um, uh, we want to make sure we engage uh, with them in whatever shape or form we can. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as far as policies are concerned, uh, th that is where uh, uh, we need to make sure because there are multiple initiatives getting uh, uh, formulated, implemented at different levels. Uh, of, where people get lost in terms of where and which uh, uh, policy will be relevant to them, how they can bring uh, them under their uh, purview to make sure there is a, a positive impact on the ground, right? And that uh, gray area is where uh, people get lost. And uh, also uh, because in India, uh, waste uh, uh, 
uh, is uh, is a uh, let's say not a problem but the responsibility of the local municipalities where the problem owned by the state governments and supported by the central government right so there are three or four different layers of decision making and that is where uh, uh, the solution gets lost somewhere right and also standardized standardization and baselining also is difficult to achieve right all uh, different states that we have uh, and municipalities that we have they interpret the same a uh, ruling or the guidelines and the parameters very differently uh, once you start uh, implementing it in in, in uh, on the ground so that is again a very very important challenge that we need to solve for great uh, again, thank yes. you so much uh, i i also just wanted to understand you know how uh, i mean since you are uh, present in 15 countries how do you adapt your waste management solutions to suit different regions and cultures because you know waste management in developing countries and developed countries work very differently uh, i mean especially in the developed countries where people pay to take away their waste here in india people expect that you get paid for your waste to be taken away so how does it work how do you adapt and uh, yeah so well, that's a very important question and and we we firmly believe unless and until a solution or a technology is not self sustainable uh, uh, financially it cannot uh, see the light of the day uh, for longer term solution okay so that is something which which uh, is very very important and we need to tweak those uh, solutions while we deploy them okay so for developing countries the economics will be very different than for uh, 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 developed countries and uh, developing economies in asia uh, pacific out there okay so we need once we own and that is the reason all these technologies that we have deployed uh, in 15 countries from from uh, us to canada to europe uh, africa asia uh, we have uh, tried to uh, uh, make we have tried to make sure that they Uh, are accustomed or acclimatized depending on the need of the hour for the local geographies right maybe uh, the same technology that we deployed in us if we deploy it in india it will not be self sustainable right because the cost uh, and the compliances will be very very different the same way if we put it in uh, here uh, and if we try to replicate that but what we are doing uh, now like i'll give you an example for the landfill mining uh, business where we have uh, completed 25 projects in india okay uh, and 600 acres of land has been given back to municipalities for better usage right so they, that that same technology we are talking to at least half a dozen countries both uh, developing and developed countries where we will replicate the same solutions and customize the business model for which will suit the local market and will be financially sustainable so that they can scale they can be scaled to a level where the impact is meaningful if if that if that uh, commercial model doesn't stack up we will not be able to make a positive impact uh, consistently and will not be able to scale it up so we need to make sure that that the right business model gets achieved so that both uh, as far as the impact is concerned and the financial viability is concerned both go hand in hand so that that hockey stick growth can be achieved and that is something which uh, we will achieve with this solution and 80% of the plant and the process that we will set up in chennai will be the same one that we will set up in uh, let's say in, in 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 thailand in indonesia or uh, in uh, middle east or europe that we are where we are talking about right so this is maybe the first waste management solution built in india for the global market well wow. great wonderful Minimum, um, uh, you have to take questions now there are lots of questions yeah, in the chat sure. box yeah prashant sir i was just going through the questions right now itself so vanita has asked that how existing workforce in terms of sanitation workers engaged are integrated in this and what kind of just transition new technology uh, are you bringing in and the challenges faced yeah yeah so as as uh, i mentioned earlier i think there is a lot of uh, uh, uh a rigor from our perspective where we do uh, play 
important uh, heat to the ESG aspect of it to make sure that we uh, structure and organize that sector by giving them better tools, better training, uh, 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 better uh, uh, compensation for uh, their efforts that is being uh, included there. Uh, uh, but for the aspect of ensuring that they uh, have to uh, uh, work a little bit in, in the uh, structured manner as well. So we can give them the opportunity. Uh, there are some players who, who will uh, stack up and uh, scale up to, uh, to the occasion to make sure that they're able to make some tangible contribution. Uh, but there are still uh, folks who uh, don't feel that organized way of working uh, as the new way of working, which will make them, uh, uh, which will make them flourish. So I think there's a mixed bag, but from our side, we always give them an option and try to uh, do the right thing to make sure they get an opportunity uh, uh, to make a difference in their lives. Great. Um, I think Varsha ma'am has mentioned that I was living in Greater Noida for some time and I have seen them in action. This is about the integrated waste management plant. Um, Bigsna has asked that what is the post-process form of the waste that you treat and what is it used for? Uh, you mentioned biogas. Is there a solid slurry byproduct as well? And what is that used for? Yeah, so this plant uh, that we have is, is, a, uh, is a smaller size plant. It, is, it treats 18 to 20 tons uh, per day of uh, the peak capacity there. So there is, yes, you are right. There, the, there is a slurry uh, and uh, uh, manure which comes out as a byproduct. Because the uh, scale is smaller, we are uh, partnering with the local farmers and uh, uh, for uh, uh, which, which is being used by their, uh, uh, for, for their uh, agricultural purposes there. We are setting up one of the India's first uh, larger size project in Kerala, which will be 200 tons per day capacity. Okay, uh, and that is where we will partner with the uh, larger organizations uh, at, at at a commercial and pan India level, uh, where they will take the uh, uh, byproduct on a commercial scale, which will be between fifty to sixty tons a day. Uh, wonderful. Um, Chandra Kishore has asked: Is how profitable is your operation? What are the risks that add to your costs? Do you encourage other entrepreneurs to jump into the waste to gold bandwagon? <laughs> no, no, I would not say it's a gold bandwagon. That is, uh, I would say, is a myth uh, because, and that is, that myth has been uh, created by uh, uh, the whole misnomer where uh, the waste uh, seems to be a gold mine, right? So uh, uh, it, it is uh, not a gold mine if you go with the aspect of reaping gold. Right, you need to solve the problem and go to the core of solving the problem. And in that journey, if you uh, uh, can make profitable venture out of it, should be the uh, uh, goal that we should be aspiring for. Right, if you if money making is the only objective, I don't uh, think so. This should be because there are challenges. There are inherent challenges. There are uh, a lot of headwinds that the sector will uh, face over the next five to seven years. We, are, we have not uh, uh, even uh, seen uh, uh, the light of the day where everything is, is stabilized. I mean, there will be some ups and downs. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, uh, passion that is required uh, for the sector uh, to make an impact. But I, I think it is a very, uh, there will be a lot of innovations, a lot of R&D, uh, a lot of newer climate tech, uh, I would say, the next decade, uh, uh, apart from uh, AI and ML, uh, climate tech and sustainability will be the uh, areas uh, where the next set of unicorns will emerge. So we need to choose our own battles that we need to fight and win. Yeah. Prashant, I completely agree. In fact, I think there is a great scope for opportunities, especially in the areas of battery recycling, especially in the yeah. areas of solar waste recycling. and. Uh, Textile recycling is another great area which is also coming up. So there are opportunities. I think people just need to explore and maybe find out their passion areas and uh, work towards it. Uh, I have some another and I have another interesting question for you. It says that the problem of waste generation is at odds with the economics of consumerism to the point 
waste is getting exported to third world countries from the global north. How will we ever catch up to that pace? Would be nice to hear your perspective on this. No, no, no. Very, very important point, and that is something where uh, we would have seen a significant uh, uh, constraints getting brought in over the last five years, where that whole uh, uh, import export of waste and uh, uh, dumping, the waste dumping is is uh, is I would not say stopped fully, but a significant constraint has been uh, implemented here. Now, as far as economics is concerned, of course, the, the permanent solution, as I started the topic with, uh, the consumers have to be more engaged. They have to, we have to be more aware and we need to make sure that we are uh, asking the right questions, demanding the right solutions from our uh, neighborhoods, from our uh, 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 municipalities and so on and so forth very, very important uh, out there and playing an active role. I mean, our uh, youths and uh, next generation is, is, is very, very passionate about this. Okay, so we need to be very uh, mindful of what kind of future are we giving it to them? What kind of environment will they be uh, breathing in? Right, so those are the things that they will be asking. And if we don't do the right thing as uh, adults and elders, I think we will have nothing but to uh, just feel guilt about it, which we should not be. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Prashant, sir, we have a question from Avinash, who is also one of our uh, alumni. And he uh, mentions that he lives in Ranchi, which is one of the tier two cities in India. What solutions regarding waste management do you see for tier two and tier three cities, which generate so much of waste and also struggles with insufficient power generation? Are you working in tier two and tier three cities in India? And if yes, how has been your experience? No, see, I think tier, tier two, tier three cities definitely is in the, uh, is we need to uh, look for a. A solution for tier two, tier three cities, because otherwise our next phase of growth, which will come from those tier two, tier three cities, will become a humongous challenge for us to address uh, in the next decade or two. Okay, and now what kind of solutions will will emerge? I think uh, uh, something like a decentralized model that we have uh, in Greater Noida will be a, a good fit uh, out there. Uh, the challenge lies is uh, uh, lies in the level of awareness that can be created. Okay, uh, the level of access to the right capital, not only from the government, but when you go out and raise the right kind of funds to deploy uh, for a sustainable ecosystem, uh, the uh, uh, NBFCs and banks uh, uh, are is still sitting on the fence, right? I mean, because the models have not been proven. Uh, out there, so I think uh, we need to build small, small success stories within those two, three uh, uh, tier two, tier three cities. But uh, trust me, I mean, eventually, that those are the markets that will you you yourself will see that a lot of uh, uh, let's say uh, talent uh, uh, that is getting uh, attracted because uh, tier two, tier three cities are getting all the captive centers getting built up. From the IT or IT services, right? The companies uh, coming along and stuff. So the, the the boom will come, and with that boom will come the responsibility of addressing the waste management sustainably as well. Yeah, I think I can add in that. Uh, I mean, being from Bhubaneswar, I mean, and setting up and having a waste management in a tier two city uh, also gives a first mover advantage to me, which uh, which I think. Uh, which has not been uh, done apart from the municipalities. There's another important question from the current students who would like to know uh, what kind of uh, skills and uh, uh, skill sets and maybe training or experiences that you believe would be valuable for individuals who look to enter in this field. And uh, are there any website routes where they can look for apply for vacancies? No, no, sure. So I think, see, the, this sector is, is still evolving and because of the huge gap uh, that we foresee as far as the demand supply gap, which will happen over the next uh, uh, five to seven years, right? Because the aspirational target that India and uh, us as an economy has, we have put for ourselves for 2030 
the uh, 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 amount of jobs and uh, opportunities that will get created will be humongous right now uh, uh, where uh, those opportunities will lie of course uh, uh, technology wherever uh, uh, r&d and technology will be one aspect for engineers uh, coming along for iafm uh, kind of uh, folks who are graduating with the uh, two courses that you uh, mentioned i think a lot of uh, uh, opportunities can be seen for the uh, local carbon markets which are coming along right in terms of consulting in terms of validation um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, decarbonization right i think a lot of excitement we are seeing uh, from uh, global companies because india uh, uh, whatever we do in india it comes at a scale yeah right so when it comes at a scale the there's no of the world that people uh, i mean companies like top 100 Uh, uh fortune 100 companies can go to when they want to make a tangible uh, move the needle for their positive decarbonization story uh, without india uh, coming into the forum okay so there will be a lot of opportunities be patient be passionate uh, take your enthusiasm uh, and have patience it will not be a easy task over the next 5 7 years but be stay focused be patient and hard work and committed towards this uh, belief that you have in uh, 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 this whole journey i think uh, 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 crossing the finish line will be very very gratifying um i have two questions which you also uh, yeah, mentioned me. about yeah so yeah, varsha minima, I'll, I'll maybe after after these two i have a dinner meeting to attend there is a delegation from saudi arabia so if i can maybe after this if i can uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely this. absolutely no <laughs> actually no problem i mean i think uh, we've already engaged on these two questions uh, before so uh, i think we could just uh, wrap it up and uh, maybe you could just wrap it up by telling one of your um, most uh, uh, fond campus memory i think that will be a great thing for ifmites to know if you have any fond campus memories and then we can close it no no sure yaar yeah. i think uh, uh, from our uh... mba uh, program i think next year 90 2000 was uh, my graduation from indore uh, next uh, year is where we are celebrating our silver uh, uh, jubilee somewhere uh, out there and uh, uh, indore what i have what i have seen uh, has uh, transformed over the last uh, 25 years okay when uh, we used to study i think uh, uh, it was a very different uh, uh, indore but i think uh, uh, folks in Bho- bhopal is is, is has been a very uh, uh, close place in my heart uh, since beginning i have uh, one of my very close uncles he was an ifs officer he is based there uh, in uh, bhopal as well i keep on visiting there but i think see memory wise college is the time which uh, uh, those are the memories that uh, uh, you will relish throughout your lives okay and this is something and i will tell you uh, the three founders for blue planet all of, all three of us were roommates in college so we oh, know no. each other for uh, the last 30 years that's okay, nice so to know it cannot ha uh, it cannot get any better where uh, you uh, work uh, uh, you uh, basically play hard and work harder uh, to make sure you are able to do and accomplish your uh, business personal uh, and uh, uh, passion uh, together Uh, where you can trust people you can you, you can uh, laugh with them you can cry with them uh, and still at the end of the day uh, uh, basically able to make some uh, some real meaningful progress uh, uh, for the sector as well so that is uh, i think i would say uh, very very uh, enriching journey so far uh, uh, very huge responsibility that we have taken uh, and uh, Uh, we have been able to uh, give a direction to a sector which uh, in 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 a way was getting direction less i would say 6 7 years back right so the, and we were able to make this uh, uh, this these bold moves uh, because we were an outsider okay so be uh, bold about uh, uh, the dreams that you have uh, believe in those dreams Uh, and success will come to you uh, uh, it, it, it definitely doesn't come easy you have to make sacrifices you have to make uh, forge alliances uh, look for partnerships and make sure that uh, the, the commitment is not 100% but 200% 
you thank you so much uh, prashant sir i mean thank you so much for your time and expertise and uh, we look forward to seeing new impact of blue planet environmental solutions uh, your commitment is uh, is actually commendable and uh, i wish all the founders and the co-founders of blue planet environmental solutions great success in the future and uh, please do visit ifm bhopal next time the next time you are in bhopal sure. i mean uh, uh, Early visit us and uh, thank you, thank you so much once again. Thank, thank you, so thank, thank, thank you, thank you. No, no, thank, thank you, you, thank you. I think thank he's you. in a hurry. Really appreciate it. We let yeah. him go. Thank you, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So do, much. Uh, thank you. Do share the pictures. Yeah. We will circulate it in our uh, groups. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'll send the PPT itself. I have. We have a little PPT, so people okay. anyone. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nilima. You did a oh, wonderful sorry, job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's quite yeah, up your street. Uh, waste management. Apka kam bhi hai. I saw your website. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. There may be I learnings think... for you uh, from Brew Planet. I think. Yeah, you definitely. Go and visit the visit their company. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, they're doing really great work. I mean, it's such a capital intensive industry though, and uh, they're being new to this sector also. They've been doing wonderful uh, work in it. So yeah, they're an inspiration. I keep following all the waste management companies. <laughs> great. Good, good, thank you. Good. Thank you so much sir, for you. this opportunity and uh, we'll thank keep in you. touch. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Nikhil sir. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Bye-bye. How do I close this session? Okay.